Earth's changing surface. The big question: How did people's understanding of what was happening on Earth's surface change over time? If you had lived in Europe during the Middle Ages, the idea that the Earth changes would have seemed crazy. At that time, people believed that mountains, valleys, and other landscape features had always been there. True, rare natural catastrophes sometimes occurred. Earthquakes, for example, shook the ground and triggered landslides. In some places, volcanoes erupted and sent up fountains of lava or red-hot melted rock. However, people viewed these catastrophes as punishments from God, not as the Earth changing. During the 1400s, 1500s, and 1600s, European explorers set sail on voyages of discovery. They found new continents and islands. Map makers created the first relatively accurate maps of the entire world. When people studied these maps, they noticed something interesting. Several continents looked as if they might fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Take a look at a world map or globe. See how the eastern edge of South America looks as if it fits into the western edge of Africa. If you could somehow push these two continents together across the Atlantic Ocean, their edges would match up. 1570 CE world map. People wondered if the continents had once been joined and later moved apart. At first, this seemed like a ridiculous idea. How could continents move on a planet that never changed? Powerful forces and gradual change. During the 1700s and 1800s, many people skilled in scientific observation became convinced that Earth's surface features do indeed change. They noticed how great masses of rock appeared to have been lifted up to form cliffs and mountains over time. They began to believe that once tall mountains had been worn down by wind, rain, and ice, and that over thousands of years valleys had been carved by rivers flowing through them. These scientists found evidence that seemed to show that sea levels had been higher and lower at different times in the past. They found layers of rock on mountain peaks that contained fossils, the preserved remains of things that lived long ago. These scientists observed how big rocks gradually broke down into tiny pieces called sediments. They saw how new rocks formed as they observed volcanic lava cool and harden. Fossils help provide information about the history of the Earth. All these observations led many scientists to believe that powerful natural forces were at work changing Earth's surface. Most of these changes were thought to have taken place very slowly, over long periods of time. Slow, gradual changes added up to produce dramatic results. These scientists were convinced that Earth's rocky surface had changed continuously throughout the planet's long history. It had changed in the past, and Earth was changing in the present too. These ideas laid the foundation for the modern science of geology. Geology is the study of the makeup of the Earth and the forces and processes that shape and change it. Rocks are very important in geology. That's because rocks hold clues to how Earth's surface has changed over time. Together with fossils. Rocks provide information about the history of the Earth. 
Shen Kua's observations. Shen Kua was a Chinese scientist and mathematician who lived from 1031 to 1095 CE. He studied rocks and fossils and made many observations of Earth's surface features. Shen Kua realized that Earth's surface is shaped very slowly by powerful forces. Some forces wear rocks down; others make new rocks and push them up to become mountains. Shen Kua reached these conclusions hundreds of years before European scientists did. Discoveries of rock layers, as well as coal and salt, indicated that the continents had once been joined. Search for clues. So, what about the jigsaw puzzle fit of the continents? During the 1800s and early 1900s, geologists studied rock layers on the continents. They made many intriguing discoveries. For example, rock layers along the northern and eastern coasts of South America match rock layers along Africa's western coast. Also, deposits of coal and salt in eastern North America are similar to those in southern Europe. Geologists found fossils of an ancient fern called Glossopteris in similar rock layers in Africa, India, Australia, and South America. They found fossils of an ancient reptile, Lystrosaurus, in both southern Africa and India. In South America and Africa, fossils of another ancient reptile, Synognathus, turned up directly across the Atlantic Ocean from each other. These discoveries seemed to indicate that the continents had once been joined, but how? Furthermore, how had they become separated? Several scientists proposed explanations, but they were quite far-fetched. One involved a gigantic eruption from the center of the Earth that ripped all the land apart. Another suggested that part of Earth's land broke away to become the Moon, and what was left became the continents. Few people paid much attention to these ideas. A better explanation was needed, one with evidence to support it. In the early 1900s. Alfred Wegener provided just that. Enter Alfred Wegener, born and educated in Germany. Alfred Wegener was interested in many scientific subjects, including weather, astronomy, and cold polar regions. Around 1910, Wegener read a scientific paper about similar fossils and rock formations. Found on different continents, he was intrigued by the mystery of the matching continents, and he wanted to solve this mystery. Wegener gathered evidence. He pulled together discoveries made by many other scientists about rock formations, fossils, and mountain ranges. Polar explorers had recently unearthed fossils of Glossopteris in Antarctica. Similar fossils had previously been found in other parts of the world. This seemed to indicate that ice-covered Antarctica might once have been joined to South America, Africa, India, and Australia. It also meant that Antarctica had once had a climate warm enough for ferns to grow. From this evidence, Wegener concluded that all the present-day continents had been joined as one huge landmass long ago. He understood, as with any new discovery, that his conclusions might be altered or challenged in the future by more evidence. Nonetheless, he believed that the existing evidence supported his conclusions. Alfred Wegener. Continents that drift. If Wegener's conclusions were correct, 
then how had the continents moved apart? An important clue came from the ocean. The ocean was still largely unexplored in Wagner's day. In the 1870s, however, scientists discovered that much of the ocean bottom was made of basalt, a heavy, dense rock that is formed when lava cools and hardens. Lava is magma that has erupted up above Earth's crust from deep underground. Most rocks that make up the continents are lighter and less dense than basalt. Seafloor Discoveries In 1872, the research ship HMS Challenger set out on a four-year mission to gather information about the ocean floor. The ship visited every ocean except the Arctic Ocean. Scientists on board dredged up mud, rocks, and ocean creatures from the seafloor. Challenger scientists also took soundings, or measures of water depth, by lowering weighted lines into the water. They measured out the line until the weight landed on the bottom. The scientists used the soundings to make rough maps of the seafloor in different places. They discovered that the seafloor has vast plains, tall mountain ranges, and deep valleys. Think of the last time you put ice in a glass of tea or lemonade. The ice floated, right? Ice floats because it is less dense than water. Wegener thought about the fact that the rocks that make up continents are less dense than rocks on the seafloor. What if continents were like enormous pieces of ice, he wondered. Could they float over the denser rocks of the ocean bottom and move around? In 1915, Wegener published a book titled The Origins of Continents and Oceans. In it, he presented his hypothesis about how the Earth's continents had moved over time. He called the process continental drift. Wegener proposed that millions of years ago, Earth had one huge landmass. He described it as a supercontinent and named it Pangaea from the Greek word Pangaea, meaning all the Earth. At some point, Pangaea broke up and the pieces, the continents, very slowly drifted away from each other. As the continents moved, mountain ranges pulled apart. Rock formations split. New oceans filled in the widening gaps between the land masses. Groups of plants and animals that had once lived together were separated. As continents drifted, their climates changed. Antarctica's climate, for example, grew so cold that the continent's plants and animals died. Only their fossils remained, buried under snow and ice. 200 million years ago? 30 million years ago? Present. Changes to the Earth's surface, according to Wegener's theory of continental drift. The Missing Puzzle Piece Wegener's continental drift hypothesis explained the fit of the continents. It explained how matching rocks, fossils, and land features ended up in different places. It explained how the climate had changed on some continents, too. Yet, other scientists criticized Wegener's ideas and rejected his hypothesis. Why? It didn't explain how drifting continents actually moved. He had not identified a natural process powerful enough to slowly move enormous pieces of land across Earth's surface. There was good reason Wegener hadn't found it, though. It was hidden beneath Earth's rocky crust.